In the name of God and prayers and peace be upon the messenger of God. We previously mentioned in the last episode that there are types of empowerment, including the empowerment of the idea, as happened with our prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, in Mecca, when his preaching spread among the people, the empowerment of the man in Surah Yasin, and the empowerment of the boy and his mother in the story of the people of the trench, when the people said, we believe in the Lord of the boy. There is empowerment in which God inflicts torment on the unbelievers and saves the believers. And the most prominent example of it is the empowerment of Noah, peace be upon him, as God drowned his unbelieving people and saved him and the few believers with him in the ship. Our Lord the Almighty mentioned the entire story in different surahs of the Holy Quran beginning when Noah calling on his Lord. God Almighty said, so he appealed to his Lord, I am overwhelmed, so help me. So we opened the gates of heaven with water pouring down, and we made the earth burst with springs, and the waters joined for a purpose already destined. Then after that, God Almighty depicted how the water was withdrawn from the land by saying, and it was said, O earth, swallow your waters, and O sky, clear up. And the waters receded, and the event was concluded, and it settled on Judah, and it was said, away with the wrongdoing people. And here the stubborn disbelievers ended, and a final judgment was passed upon them. Then the stage of empowering the believers who survived with Noah in the ark began beginning with the words of God Almighty. And he said, embark in it. In the name of Allah, be it sailing and its anchorage. And the supplication of our master Noah, peace be upon him. My Lord, land me a blessed landing, for you are the best of transporters. And God Almighty's response to Noah in his saying, it was said, O Noah, disembark with peace from us and with blessings upon you and upon communities from those with you. There is empowerment in authority and rule as happened to David and Solomon, peace be upon them. We see it in the words of God Almighty, and we gave David and Solomon knowledge, and they said, praise be to Allah who has favored us over many of his believing servants. In addition to the words of God Almighty, O oh David, we made you a steward over this land, so judge between the people with justice. And God Almighty said in empowering Solomon, he said, my Lord, forgive me and grant me a kingdom never to be attained by anyone after me. God also empowered Dhul Karnain, as we see in his saying, we established him in the land and we gave him the means of everything. As for the empowerment of Joseph, peace be upon him. It was in sharing the government and not in holding the highest position in it. And we saw that he worked as a minister by decree of the king. Scholars spoke about the permissibility of participating in a government that does not follow God's law. And they said that it is permissible if the goal is to bring the greatest amount of benefits and prevent the greatest amount of harm. The personality of Joseph, peace be upon him, his determination and prestige enabled him to do this. The Holy Quran also spoke about the goals of empowerment. For example, in the words of God Almighty, those who, when we establish them in the land, perform the prayer and give regular charity and command what is right and forbid what is wrong. One of the first priorities for enjoining good is preaching for monotheism. And one of the first priorities for forbidding evil 
is rejecting polytheism and misguidance. So Joseph, peace be upon him, achieved the goals of empowerment. He called for monotheism with reason and logic and called for the abandonment of paganism and polytheism. The Holy Quran also mentioned the stages of empowerment, the most important of which is the law of affliction that Joseph, peace be upon him, went through, whether with the brothers, in the well, with the women, or in prison. Surah Yusuf mentions the objectives, type, and various causes of empowerment, ranging from political, economic, and social factors. In the words of God Almighty, and thus we establish Joseph in the land so that he may settle wherever he pleased, we find that Joseph began to move from one city to another in Egypt with the power of authority, ordering people to farm and work, involving them in his economic program, unleashing their energies and mobilizing them with him to overcome the years of hardship. Joseph began to move among the people with an administrative team who raised him on the values of honesty and truth that originate in the doctrine of monotheism. Joseph went on urging people to work according to a comprehensive plan consisting of agriculture, saving, rationalizing, consumption, and predicting the future. In God Almighty's saying, so that he may settle wherever he pleased. We understand that Joseph, peace be upon him, was supervising the work himself and moving from place to another to monitor the progress of work. In